Okay, now we're going to test the response of the filter, and the way we're going to do this is with a device that's called a VNA, or Vector Network Analyzer. This is the Mini VNA Pro, which we're going to use, and this is going to be our device under test, and we're going to check the filter response by connecting it. with the appropriate adapters. Okay, now I turn this device on. This um, does have a built-in battery and a Bluetooth and um, I'm not going to go over to the um, computer and uh, do the testing on the computer. Now we're running the VNA-J software supplied with the Mini VNA. We will set it up to measure the frequency response of the filter. The VNA has two modes of operation. The reflection mode is used with single port measurements, such as when measuring the impedance and SWR of an antenna. But for filter measurements that use the input and output ports, we need to set the VNA to the transmission mode. This sets the display parameters on the left scale to be the transmission loss in dB, and on the right scale will show the phase shift through the filter. I have saved the limits of the frequency scan from 5 megahertz to 50 megahertz into the presets, and a double click on that entry will start the scan. The blue trace shows a phase shift through the filter, and the green trace represents the attenuation in decibels over the range from 5 megahertz to 50 megahertz. Using the mouse button, we can place markers here at 10 megahertz. at 30 megahertz and at 50 megahertz. Now looking below at the table, we can read the attenuation at 10 megahertz. It's 2.24 decibels. At 30 megahertz, it's 30 decibels. And at 50 megahertz, it's 50 decibels, approximating the calculations of the RF SIM 99 model and quite satisfactory for this application. Finally, it would be nice to um, actually have a visual uh, representation of the square wave being uh, changed into a sine wave. Uh, but that would require an oscilloscope that went up uh, probably up to around 100 megahertz, and I don't have an oscilloscope that goes that high. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do a um, simulation of uh, the waveforms using a, another um, shareware program called LT Spice. Um, the actual setup of the um, circuit here is a little bit beyond the scope of this uh, presentation, but I'll just uh, we like to say that we have set up the um, uh, the filter here with um, a uh, source and a load, and uh, we are actually going to be able to see um, the simulations of the waveforms. Uh, the way you stimulate, uh, simulate a um, square wave is you actually have to put in the uh, duration of the pulse on and off and the um, uh, rise and fall time of the waveforms. and. All those numbers were put into here, and it shows as a command, um, which is executed when you actually run the program and do the simulation. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and we'll take a look and see what we see. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, maximize. We now see the um, simulated uh, input and output waveforms uh, of a 10 megahertz square wave going through that filter with those exact uh, values uh, that we have in our physical filter. 
the red trace here is the uh, we have two full cycles of the uh, square wave and uh, the green um, uh, curve here is the output uh, coming out of the filter and as you can see it looks like a really nice clean smooth sine wave and uh, I think um, we can uh, take that the actual output of the filter is going to be really close to this since uh, other simulations were uh, really close to um, uh, uh, predicting uh, the uh, parameters of this filter. So uh, that's it and uh, this is our evaluation of the 10 megahertz low pass filter. Thank you.